Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the third episode in my new series of listening to albums I've never heard for the very first time. I hope you enjoyed the last two episodes. I've already done the Blue Album by Weezer and From Mars to Sirius by Gajira. So if you haven't seen them, go and check them out. Today I am super duper excited because I'm going to be reacting to and listening to for the first time Nanagon Infinity by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. This is a little bit different to the other ones I've done because in the other episodes I'd never heard anything by Weezer and I'd never heard anything by Gajira. But what makes this one a little bit different is King Gizzard are already one of my all-time favorite bands. I haven't been into them for that long but they quickly became like in my top 10 bands of all time because they're just so good. I got into them at the end of 2022 and I am extremely familiar with their five albums that they released in 2022. I actually did a whole video ranking their 2022 albums so go and check that out if you haven't already. I guess just to give a little bit of context I absolutely adore this band but I'm not as familiar with their earlier work as I am with the albums that came out in 2022 and 2023 so i just thought it'd be fun to kind of make my way back in their discography and see the kind of things that they released early in their career and i thought i'd start off with nonagon infinity just because i hear so many people talking about it i think it's probably one of their most famous albums if not their most famous it's one of the kind of albums i would hear more mainstream people talk about so i think it'll be interesting for context my favorite albums by king gizzard are Changes, um, Ice Death Planets, Lungs, Mushrooms and Lava, and then probably Petro Dragonic Apocalypse. So I'm gonna be listening to Nonagon Infinity for the first time. I don't really know what to expect because obviously I've never heard this album before. Wikipedia lists the genres as progressive rock, psychedelic rock, garage rock, jazz, fusion, and heavy metal. Literally my favorite things just put into one there. And this was their first album to make the top 20 of the Australian albums chart. Well, with all that being said, I'm gonna pop my earphones in and we'll get started. I am aware from the things that I've read that this album is supposed to be played like continually and musically there isn't really like a separation between the songs but obviously I'm going to be separating them just for the purpose of this video but I am aware that the album is kind of meant to be played from start to finish so hopefully that doesn't change my experience. The first song is called Robot Stop and let's get straight into it. <laughs> Okay, quite fast paced. I can't keep up with what's going on here, but I'm pretty sure I just heard some harmonica at the start there, which guys, I'm an absolute sucker for some harmonica. And so far, I really love the rhythm, the grooviness, the pacing of the song. <laughs> the I love how we're just literally getting straight into it here. <laughs> One thing that always strikes me about King Gizzard is it's so hard to actually describe their music and talk about it because it's like one second you'll be hearing country influences the next you'll be hearing like Bollywood influences there's just too much going on it's hard to talk about this instrumental section in the middle is very infectious very engaging and as much as I love Stu's vocals and I really do I do think the instrumental kind of like jammy sections that they often have in the middle of a lot of their songs are just like chef's kiss love the harmonized vocals there with some kind of strange vocal effect kind of sounds like they're singing through one of those really like shitty microphones that you used to have when you were a kid i love the kind of fuzzy muddy vocals but mixed with like a crystal clear production <laughs> I love that at the end, that Nana Garn Infinity opens the door. And obviously it's going straight into Big Fig Wasp. First impressions are I'm really enjoying the kind of heavy rock elements of this album, but I'd like to hear some more psychedelia as we go further on. So next is Big Fig Wasp. I love how it's just kept the momentum here. So far this album is so engaging. Again, the time signature is just keeping you on your toes. It's it's very unpredictable. I love that shouting of Big Fig Wasp. I can't really get what this song or album is supposed to be about yet though. But I love how it's a very similar melody to Robot Star. I think there's gonna be these like reoccurring themes and melodies on this album just because of the way it's presented as like one big long song. It's just I 
this is like such a fun album. I really feel like I can't, you can't just help but like smile and bob your head. And that is one of my favorite things about this band's music. It never takes itself too seriously. It's just fun. It's like everyone's just here to have a good time. <laughs> love that bass in the background there it's really subtle but it's really like driving the song and would it really be a king gizzard song if we didn't hear a woo at least once it literally ended the exact same way with the nana girl infinity opens the door and now we're straight into gamma knife <laughs> I love how it's literally just not letting up. Again, that subtle harmonica just in the back there is, I absolutely love that. I think this is the best use of harmonica in a song I've ever heard. This is too catchy. This is definitely my favorite so far. It's so catchy. This doesn't feel like a casual listen. It feels like you really need to sit down and like give this your full attention. And again, it's kind of hard for me to do this video because with King Gizzard albums, you need to listen to them like multiple times because you'll notice so many different things each time you listen. <laughs> okay, is this some kind of drum solo here? Because this is so good. Having earphones in is great for this because it's literally traveling all around my earphones at the moment. The rhythm section, that bass and drums together is unbelievable. Okay, so that was the first one where you could kind of tell that the song was ending a little bit there, but the transitions are so smooth between each song. And that felt like a complete sensory overload. Every second of these songs is filled with such like high energy. And that's why they're so infectious and they're such like an addictive band. I feel like when you discover this band, it's really difficult to not become full on obsessed with them. But anyway, the next song is People Vultures. Love that. Okay, I'm sorry, but that already, I love the opening of this one, the way more instruments just kept layering on top. It's these subtle little things, but it just makes the listening experience so enjoyable. Okay, so this definitely feels like there's been a little bit of a shift in mood. This feels very intriguing. Like you definitely can't tell where this is going. This is so good. This is, I keep saying this, but I feel like this is now my favorite. <laughs> I love the vocal delivery on that. What else have I got left to spew down? I think that's what they say. But yeah, there's something a little bit eerie about this one. It's still got that kind of high energy with the drums and the bass, but there's just something a little bit eerie. <laughs> Than what that sound is but that is obviously very closely associated with psychedelic music so that is how we are going to transition into the song mr beat my cat's just gone under the blanket there so don't be alarmed that there's now a lump i absolutely love that one i loved how there was a little bit of a shift but i loved how it still had that kind of continuous drum beat and still had a bit of groove about it but next up we have mr beat okay we're starting strong with a lovely bass line the rhythm time signature is confusing me a little bit i can't tell what that is it feels like something's a little bit off sorry but that actually reminded me of something on the album ram by paul mccartney which is one of my all-time favorite albums this feels like a little bit of a callback to that kind of 70s sound okay that synth is 
got me hooked straight away but this song feels really different from all the others i feel like the lyrics i only miss a beat are coinciding with the fact that they are actually missing a beat in the time signature that's why it sounds a little off that is something they would do but this is groovy as hell again This is definitely the oddball song out of all the ones that we've had so far. There's something about this that just doesn't feel keeping within the theme. I like those subtle vocals. They're kind of almost whispering and the bass is really coming to the forefront. Okay, really enjoyed that one. It definitely felt a little bit out of place out of the ones that we've heard so far, but I like it. I thought it was funky, catchy, and I feel like it was a bit of a reprieve from the kind of really high energy that we've been having. So it was nice. And now we are going into the song Evil Death Roll, which is a seven minuter. <laughs> the high energy and that crashing drum beat is back. Okay, one thing I love about King Gizzard is their lyrics are always just going to be nonsensical. You really have to do some kind of mental gymnastics to work out what it is they're talking about. But I did just hear your scales are hard and green. Open your jaw for me. So are we talking about some kind of reptile here? Loved that little drum fill there. Really subtle, but just really adds so much to the song. Again, this one's pretty fun. It's really ramped the energy back up to like 100. I love this. This is giving like proper 70s prog rock. This is like Osric Tentacles, Early Gong, all those bands that I absolutely love. This is like a modern spin on that sound. Okay, this is reminding me a little bit of the really fast part in the song um, Iron Lung from Ice Death album. I think it's just like the one word phrases just coming like one after the other that's reminding me of that. And now we have that repeating motif of Nonagon Infinity opens the door. I just love that. I love the whole pacing of this song. Okay, things are slowing down a little bit. Really, really enjoying the production on this one. It's probably my favorite production so far. It's really, really crisp, but it's not like overly polished. I feel like it's still got that kind of raw, like garage band kind of sound. Love, 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 love the way that this is building up to something again. That scream, that has just favorite moment on the whole album for me that was such a satisfying build-up and then i just love that big like crash of sound all instruments coming from everywhere okay the way that that's just transitioned to the song invisible face i wasn't expecting that this album is kind of blowing my mind a little bit but that was evil death roll i really 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 enjoyed that one we've only got three songs left now and the next one is invisible face so let's give this one a go Okay, first of all, that opening like polyrhythmic little beat there is really, it's really reminded me of Gong. And Gong are one of my all time favorite prog bands. So that is a compliment. Again, I've got to talk about the bass because I love listening in earphones because you can really hear that bass line. It's so satisfying. We'll switch up, here we go. I'm literally obsessed with that. The way there was that subtle use of just a symbol and then the bass came in, that was beautiful. And those space rock-esque synths, so, so Hawkwind, Osric Tentacles inspired. This is my favorite part of the whole album, I have to say. This is so, this is divine. Again, really kind of spooky, eerie vocal effects at the end there, which is a little bit of a callback to People Vultures. But this song is just so good. Wow. 
Okay, I heard the little bit of transition there, but the next song is Wah Wah. Is this gonna be George Harrison inspired? <laughs> Love the like ascending phrase with the guitar riff there and then the bass seen in the show again. So learn to make them cry. I'm getting the feeling that maybe Wah Wah is a reference to crying. I'm struggling a little bit with the lyrics on this album so if you do know the meanings please let me know in the comments. Really enjoying the imagery that's created in the verses here. Um, I feel like this is the first time we're hearing some kind of acoustic guitar throughout this whole album. Okay, what like a dark ending that one had. And then there was this really kind of like really whiny guitar riff at the end. I don't know how they managed to make music that is so weird, but is so like accessible. There's literally so much talent in this band. It's actually a joke. They're just amazing. But anyway, now we have the last song, which is called Road Train. Really loving the kind of unpolished production on the drums there. Okay, that was like a chuggy Metallica riff right there. Okay, yeah, this really is reminding me of Whiplash by Metallica. The kind of road train call out is very similar to Whiplash. And we're switching up now to end the album on a high. Okay, um, and we're done. So Road Train has just looped back into Robot Start, but obviously that is technically the end of the album, although you could literally just listen to it again and again and again. So overall, I really, really enjoyed that album. I can't believe it took me this long to listen to it, to be honest, but I really loved how every song was kind of really good as a standalone song but obviously the whole point of the album is to listen to it as one solid piece it's just something different and it's just another kind of gimmick that they have for their albums that just make them always at the top of their game i loved the unpredictability of the album i loved the experimentalness of the album i liked the sense of urgency i think that album was only about 40 minutes long i loved how cohesive it was and how there were often callbacks to previous songs and kind of returning motifs, returning lyrical themes, returning musical melodies. As for my favourite songs, I think my favourite songs are going to have to be definitely Invisible Face, that was my number one favourite. Big Fig Wasp was probably my second favourite and then it's really hard to choose a third favourite. Maybe Evil Death Roll, but I really like them all and it's really difficult to pick a favourite when the album is so cohesive. I just love this band. So that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If there's any more albums that you want me to listen to, please leave them in a comment below and I'll be back soon with another one, I'm sure. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.